Good evening and welcome. For our Monday Thursday service, we welcome those of you both here present in person and those also online. I invite you to stand as you are able and turn to the baptismal font as we begin with confession and forgiveness. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Holy Jesus, the bread and wine of your last supper have become your body and blood given for us. Transform us with your holy presence. Cleanse us, forgive us, and renew us in your word. Amen. I was going to say you may be seated, but for the reading of the gospel, please remain standing. And our gospel reading is found in the gospel of Mark, the 14th chapter. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God who is and was and is to come. Amen. Well, when I was in my second year of seminary, I took an elective course at the local Episcopal seminary that my school had a relationship with. And the entire first day of the class, it wasn't talking about the syllabus, it wasn't talking about really the course much at all. Instead, the professor said, all we're going to do today is just one thing. I want you to tell a story about your people. And by the way, this is a three-hour class. So. Since then, I've got to thinking, though. Amidst all the changes that the world has seen throughout the course of human history, storytelling may be one of those few enduring practices. Stories connect us with all of our people, past, present, and maybe even future as well. Stories remind us of who we are, what's important to us, and how to make sense of our lives when all the changes in the world surround us. Stories connect us with ancestors that we've never met, exactly because they shape who we are today. We're not just shaped by those in our current life, but also the generations that come before us. 
And in the process, we shape the future as well. And whether or not stories are told can have an effect on the well-being both of ourselves, but also future generations. Scientists that study trauma have learned that both individual and collective well-being can be impacted by the stories that we tell to one another, or by the stories we don't tell. One of these scientists that study the relationship between trauma and storytelling, Deborah Hosaimi says, traumatic memory is like a series of still snapshots without words that reside in the right hemisphere of our brains. The left side of the brain does the thinking and disconnection between the two sides occurs during traumatic events. The part of the brain that's most affected by trauma is the broca, which is in charge of talking. And also the prefrontal cortex, amygdala, and hypothalamus are also affected. So these scientists, they call for communities to retell the stories about their own history and what makes us beloved as people. To reclaim unique cultural strengths and resiliencies, especially when hardships come and would sway us from believing in our own belovedness. Because the stories that we're told about ourselves impact the way that we live. In between college and seminary, I, took, I spent close to a year living in Majunga, Madagascar, with a Lutheran community there. And one night I was having dinner with a friend of mine named Helen, who taught at the local Lutheran seminary in a very rural area. But she lived close to me in the nearby city of Majunga, and we were talking about the history of French colonization in the country since it was only about 60 years ago that Madagascar officially gained its independence from France. And we were talking about the cultural impacts that colonization had on the country. Helen talked of how colonization tried to project French norms and attitudes onto Malagasy culture, such as in the desire for new things, items and things that can be imported from other countries. But Helen told me that even though she is saddened by this, this still impacts the way that she raises her three kids. Because the stories that she tells her kids about who they are impacts how she raises them. She said to me, especially living in a city, it can be hard for my kids to resist French ideals. But I always teach my kids to live like those in the countryside because they were the ones least impacted by colonization. They live as Malagasy people have always lived. So despite the lies that were told to Helen through colonization, she still held on to the stories of her people, stories that massively outlast the lies of colonization. These stories of true Malagasy culture are what give her hope for an independent and liberated future, both for her family as well as her country. Now, in our story for today, Jesus and the disciples, they aren't just gathered for their evening meal. They're gathered because of the story of their people. Because Jesus has been journeying much of this entire Gospel of Mark that we've been working our way through to Jerusalem, where Jesus and the disciples find themselves at the Last Supper. Because this was the annual tradition for practicing Jews of the time, to go to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast, when Jesus' ancestors were freed and liberated from slavery in Egypt, as we read about in Exodus. And so Jesus gathers with his disciples because of this story of Passover freedom, of being freed from their bondage. The story of Jesus' and his disciples' ancestors' liberation is what gives them hope to continue to face the crises of their own day. But the, yet they do this right in the middle of the original Holy Week, when the only thing that the people of the time can see is Jesus' imminent death. It's this Passover story that Jesus himself clings to, especially in our text. Because as divine and holy as we believe Christ to be, he sure appears to be anything 
but that in our text. He embodies every bit of human pain, agony, and despair that we humans also do. In verse 33, the text says, Jesus began to be distressed and agitated. And this comes right before verse 34, when Jesus himself says, I'm deeply grieved, even to death. Saying this before he prays that God would take this cup from him, take this struggle to the cross from him. Jesus gathers with his disciples because it's the story of Passover liberation that gives him hope amidst what he knows is about to happen. Amidst the flawed nature of his disciples, so much so that they would conspire three times to betray him, even though they promise three times that they won't. Jesus does what many of us do when we're distressed and agitated. He gets together with his friends. And as holy and divine as we believe Christ to be, he too still needs a support group. He still desires for human connection, even though he knows that it will be humans that will betray him, and it will be humans that will crucify him. Jesus gathers with his disciple to remember this Passover story, both for his own consolation, but also so that his disciples would realize the continued need for Passover freedom in their own time. Jesus has spent much of his entire ministry, much of his entire life, pointing out that this is not, or his world at the time, is not what true Passover liberation looks like. And our text is example A of this, the disciples betraying him three straight times. Jesus knows that This will lead to his death. And so Jesus' hope for the world is made known in simple bread and wine. It's this bread and this wine that will continue to tell the story of the covenant that God made with Abraham back in Genesis, that the world would be and live as God's faithful people, and that Passover freedom one day would be realized, just as Jesus has been modeling his entire life. His body and blood of the covenant are the body and blood of this Passover liberation movement. This covenant promise, it also keeps showing up today as well. God's yes to us has never been dependent on us saying yes in return. Never was God's promise of liberation for the ancient Israelites dependent on them not messing up after God freed them from slavery in Egypt. God's promise to show up in bread and wine in our story for today was definitely not dependent on the disciples saying, yes, we'll follow you. Jesus predicts that they won't even do that. And still today, God's promise to show up in bread and wine is also not dependent on us always acting as God would have us. We know we don't. Yet God continues to tell the story of unconditional love. And we're free to enter that story. We'll gather around this table just as the disciples did in our story. As people that fall short, fall asleep, and don't always see the neighbor in need. And yet, we're told the same story. The Passover story that the disciples gathered to remember is the story that the ancient Israelites lived through as well. And these stories meet that of Oak Knolls. As we gather around this table of bread and wine, we're also strengthened to share in this meal with those that God calls us to. Through ministries like our ICA food drive, so that all of God's people can share in God's bread and wine. God's continuing this promise through other ministries, whether it be our quilting ministry, our LPGM relationships, our circle of welcome relationships, welcoming new families to the Twin Cities. And yet, we still don't live in a a true Passover world. We are still held captive to the forces of sin in this world, forces of systemic racism, 
We don't always treat our planet the way that God commanded us to in Genesis. And we gather under a roof this night while many will sleep without one. The story that we're told about ourselves is also the story we're told about God. As people created to be whole and free from all that binds us. As people that are sustained in simple the simple promise of bread and wine. So that the story that we're told about ourselves would also be told to those that maybe have never been told it before. And so I invite you to come taste and see of this story that has been told for centuries. The world is waiting to hear it as well. Amen. Gathered by the Spirit, let us return to the Lord our God and pray for the church, the world, and all who yearn for a new life. God of stories, we gather this night intertwined into your story of justice and liberation. We give you thanks for all the ways in which your Spirit moves amongst us. We pray that you would strengthen us at this table so that our story would meet that of those who have never felt their role in one. We pray to you. that dwells with us. You poured out your love for us so that, so that we may live a different life embedded in your story of liberation. And yet, we know that this world still needs this reminder. We pray for those that are hungry, that we would see you in them. We pray for those that have no protection from the cold. And we pray for this community that we would first see where the cross is in our own time and strive to bring about new life. We pray to you.
God of love, this Holy Week, we remember how you suffered every bit of human pain, agony, and anxiety. And yet we know that this is not the end of the story. May your spirit of peace and renewal be made known to all those that need it, especially Heidi, Chuck, Marcella, and all those we name in our hearts or aloud. We pray to you. Gather all our prayers and that which is on our hearts and minds in your loving embrace, most gracious God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please turn to one another with the sign of God's peace.
us pray together. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your, for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in praying the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This evening we will have one station. We will commune this section of the sanctuary first, 
and then this section second. So uh, ushers will invite you down the center aisle and then you will return on the side aisle. You will receive bread and wine. If you would prefer to have a gluten-free wafer or white grape juice, just extend your index finger. This is the Lord's meal and you are all invited. This is bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come, you may be seated.
remains, remain seated for the blessing and the post-communion prayer. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, in this sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. at me, they mock me with parted lips, they wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him, let him rescue him, if he loves him, my God, my abandoned me. Indeed, many dark surround me, a pack of evildoers closes up upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned? my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me, O oh my help, hasten to aid me. My God, assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. Are you descendants of Jacob? 